Hi folks, the Filipina Bee here. And today I'd like to talk about a subject that doesn't get much attention, but it should. Now a lot of you guys are either in a relationship with a Filipina or you're considering one. And who can blame you? I'm not gonna list all our positive attributes that it take too long. But for whatever reason, you've decided that you're interested in women from the Philippines. Now some of you guys feel very lucky to have met a partner here and she probably feels very lucky to have you. But have you ever stopped to wonder how things are gonna play out, especially if there's a significant age gap? What will happen if you reach your golden years and she's still middle-aged? And what happens after that? Is your relationship fair to your Filipina? As I've said before, the expats who come to Southeast Asia are often older than the general population. You probably won't be able to make any money in this country, and you have to have an independent source of revenue to stay here for the rest of your life. So it only makes sense that many of the foreigners who move here are already retired. Not all, but the majority. And given the way Filipinas aren't as sensitive to the issue of age, it's not unusual to see couples with a significant gap. That's fine. I have no problem with that. But I'd like to think that both parties are in the relationship for the right reasons. And both of you have thought about the evolution of your partnership and what happens 20 or 30 years down the road. Foreigners often talk about what Filipinas get from them and how they benefit so much from finding a Western mate. But is that always the case? Yes, a Filipina can often benefit financially, especially in the short term, with things like a steady supply of food and having a better roof over her head. But what many people don't consider is that she's making a trade too, sometimes for a very uncertain future. Depending on what kind of relationship you're in, your Filipina might be exchanging her best years for a relatively short period of care and companionship but she can be left with nothing once the rug gets pulled out from under her if something happens to you or the relationship dissolves. I often hear some of the MGTOW and other red-pailed guys talk about how they'll never get married or even settle down with someone. Now, I don't blame you for feeling that way, and you have every right to live as you see fit. In fact, as many of you know, I actually agree with most of what you're saying. But even if you believe in the theory of rent, don't buy, enjoying woman after woman can only last so long. So what's your end game? What happens when you get too old to care for yourself? And a trip to the grocery store might as well be a trip to the moon. And it will happen. Are you going to go back to your home country to an assisted living facility? Or maybe stay here and hire a nurse to help you in your later years? hoping she won't speed the process along so she can have first crack at your personal belongings? Or are you gonna wait till the last minute and hope to finally build a quick relationship with someone who genuinely cares what happens to you when you reach an age that you're no longer mobile enough to do your own cooking and cleaning? These are all things you need to consider for yourself. And of course, there's no right or wrong answers. But what about the Filipina? Are the women you're spending time with getting a fair deal? If you're just casually dating someone, then no big deal. But as weeks turn into months, people can get attached to each other over time. And if you have no plans of marriage, or at least a permanent partnership, then what's really in it for the Filipina? Now you could make the argument that she's better off than she'd be without you, that she could barely even feed herself or her family when you met her. But that doesn't address the question of whether it's fair. If you're sitting in a lifeboat and someone's drowning in the ocean next to you and you offer to pull them into the boat in exchange for a lifetime of servitude, that's certainly offering them a better deal. But is it a fair deal? In cases like these, a Filipina is often trading the flower of her youth for what? A few years of rent and food? As most of you already know, a young woman in her prime has to forge the best partnership she can while she's able 
because life definitely doesn't get any easier for a single woman in this country. It's not like the West. Most of the available jobs here are awarded to young women, but once they hit middle age, it's very tough to get employment, and most jobs come with a fairly short contract that the business can cancel anytime it wants to, and they often do, just to make room for younger employees that they don't have to pay as much. The next time you go to the mall, or a grocery store, or really just about anywhere, notice it's working because it represents the way things are around here. The first thing you'll see is the number of young women, followed by young men. And at the very bottom of the hierarchy is the older generation. In fact, by the time you hit your 40s and 50s, what we consider older around here, the only employment you're gonna find is self-employment. And many people end up peddling vegetables by the roadside. So if you've been providing for her while you've been together, she's going to have a real hard landing when you're not. Now, if she knows the deal in advance, then of course it's up to her to make her own choices. But what a lot of you folks don't consider when you hang out with a woman for an extended period is the opportunity cost for the Filipina. By spending time with you, she's passing up any other chances she might have had to find a secure future. So what happens to her once you move on or pass away? Now this might not be a pleasant conversation to have and you might find it difficult to talk about getting a lot older and needing help, but there's good news. Filipinas are no strangers to caring for the elderly. We're world-renowned caregivers and we make some of the best nurses in the world. It's part of our culture to respect and care for our seniors we almost always give great care to our older loved ones. So the thought of being with you when you need us most is not something that's going to scare us away or turn us off. We're actually proud of it. It's like fulfilling the ultimate duty, another thing we were raised for, circle of life and all that. Now when you mention this subject, she'll probably react with, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to imagine a time when you're not here anymore. And she means it. Filipinos like to avoid uncomfortable topics and pretend that bad things don't exist. We live day to day, and if it's not something we have to deal with right away, we usually don't. But this subject is pretty vital, so bring it up yourself. It's important to discuss your long-term goals and plans for what happens when you're gone. You know what it's like here. And if you're not making any arrangements, your Filipino partner is going to have an even harder time getting along without you than when you met her to begin with. A lot of women, especially out of desperation or because they don't have the ability to see over the horizon, will latch onto someone, hoping they can turn your relationship into a permanent one. But if that's not part of your plan, is it really fair to let her have false hope? Just don't string her along. And for God's sake, don't pretend to be someone you're not. Be honest with your partner. Let her see the real you, warts and all. Expats in a country like this have the ability to recreate themselves. And they sometimes leave reality behind in order to look like they're more of a catch than they really are. A simple or naive Filipina has no way to determine fact from fiction. And there's a lot of fiction going on around here. And an honorable man will explain his true situation and intentions because he understands that a Filipina may not get a lot of chances to find a good partner once the bloom is off her rose. So assuming you feel a healthy sense of responsibility for the woman you're with and truly care what happens to her, if something should happen to you, what can you do? Well, obviously, the first thing is to secure her finances. If you took her away from a job or encourage her not to work, you might want to consider giving her an allowance equal to her wage, or better yet, invest it for her in an account that she can't drain the minute her brother-in-law convinces her to buy him a jeepney so he can support the family, which of course will somehow never happen, and the only person making money off the deal will be the owner of the local bar. I hate to say it, 
But if her family and friends find out she's getting a monthly amount from you, they'll play cards with her. The guilt card, the pity card, and the duty card. So they can get their hands on it. Chances are, by the time she needs it, it'll be long gone. Because we're notoriously bad at planning ahead without help from a wiser person like you. Another strategy, of course, is to leave her enough in your will to last her. For some of you guys, that's no big deal. But for other guys, you might not have anything left when all is said and done. At least make arrangements for your own medical care and funeral expenses. The worst thing I can think of is not only leaving your Filipina without enough to survive, but then to saddle her with paying your bills after you're gone. The cost of living here isn't so bad, but the cost of dying is surprisingly high for many people. So how can you help if you have no resources yourself? Well, even if you don't have much money, you can show her how to start a business. Most Filipinos aren't very business savvy. So even if you barely have enough cash to cover your expenses, you probably have enough business sense, or even just common sense, to give her good advice on how to do something that can provide some form of income as a safety net. Even if it's something very simple to start, like her own little curbside food stand. Once she builds up a small nest egg, show her how to invest a modest sum now so she has something to work with when you're no longer able to help her at all. But whatever you choose to do, just make sure that you give some thought to the woman who stuck by you and devoted herself to caring for you. Filipinas might not be able to add much to your finances, but the contributions we do provide can be the most valuable of all. And while it's good to help her secure the resources she needs after you're gone, it's equally important to help her find a healthy way to feel about things if you should pass away. As you know, there's no divorce here, and most of us believe in a permanent bond with one person. So there's often a lot of guilt associated with pursuing a relationship after a death of a partner. When my father died, my mother waited four years before she even considered finding another man to love. But if there's a large age gap between the two of you, it's not fair for your Filipina to mourn for the rest of her youth as a way of honoring your memory and the love you had. I know this is hard to contemplate, but if it's something you could do, please try to alleviate her guilt by assuring her that the best way to honor your memory is to live a happy life and to find love again, if she can. Well, I admit this wasn't my happiest video, but I felt it was a topic that I wanted to address. I promise, I'll be back with the funny pee in just a few days. Till next time, folks. If you think about it, I'm nothing like Cleopatra. I never married my brother, I never ruled a nation, and I certainly don't live in denial. In fact, the only thing we have in common is an appreciation of slightly older men. You could consider me a diplomat though, because my videos attempt to bridge the gap between the sexes and between Eastern and Western cultures. I'll always bring you something new to consider, and I hope you enjoy my efforts. If you do, please remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons, as well as the little notification bell so you can see my future content. And if you don't like my videos, then you can kiss my ass.